Mountains divide us and the waste of seas. Yet still the blood is strong, the heart is highland, and we in dreams behold the Hebrides. So they'd sit around these fires at night, especially in the long winters, and entertain each other with stories and songs. And we're going to give you a little bit of a taste of that tonight. Marava, Maraha, Maravias, Bubra, Achrim, Nangra, Ritra, Shri Liano, Achrim, Nangra. Retry, Shri Liana. As it was, as, as it is, as, as it, it shall be, evermore, evermore. O triune of grace, grace, with the ebb, with the flow, with the flow. O thou triune of grace, with the ebb, with the flow. flow. Parted we were, while the long night was breaking. But in bright morning, converse again. The songs and the culture, it's about the land. The land is what birthed the stories. And it's the land that drew me to these islands back in 1995. And one thing led to another as it does, and I ended up in a pub. The barman was the manager, and we got to talking, and he said, if you're interested in the stories, you must come back and do something. And I left with this seed sitting in me, like how in the name of all that is beautiful would I ever be able to come back and connect with the stories. And the following spring, I began the first three months of field work. By day, I roved the island, walking, um, getting very wet. And when they were ready, we would visit. And when they were ready, they would share stories. And when they were ready, Sometimes they would let me put the tape recorder on. These people that I went and spent time with were part of an indigenous culture. And the recordings that I did are reflective of that time. Now 20 years have passed. Almost all of the tradition bears that I visited with have passed as well. I'm going to introduce a few of the characters that I spent time with. He's a bard, he's a poet. He was a lovely man. He loved writing poems about women. Here's Donald McCreary. He knew so much about the islands. He knew which lichen to scrape off a rock, to dye wool red. He also knew death rituals and death customs. He also knew all of the latest gossip. So that's Michael Campbell and Kate McPhee and their brother and sister. Michael would sing for me sometimes and Kate would always just, you know, bring the tea <laughs> and the scones. This is Mary McCrory and her husband Neil and they come from a place called Loch Harnan in South Uist. And Mary was great for the genealogy. This is Mary McLean. She is from the Isle of Grimsey. She was a published poet and had a degree. She lived with her dogs. This is Seamus, Seamus McLeod, and Seamus was my dearest friend. 
I could talk all night about Seamus. <laughs> he knew the place to find white heather, which is very rare, and is connected to lovers. So he was a sweetheart. And that chappy in the back, that's his brother Ian. This is another Donald McDonald and um, his wife, Flora. And it was just after Donald had had a stroke and he couldn't speak. And he was such an intelligent man. He was a scholar. He knew the history. He had a mind that was just amazing. He made spinning wheels. This is Donald Allen and Rachel McIsaac. And they lived on Bimbecula. And Donald was a fisherman. And uh, many stories involved fish. <laughs> um, and we would sit by his fire and he would smoke his pipe. And <clears throat> Rachel would come in with tea. Once upon a time when the sea spoken flowers and the wind the wind spilled lullabies on the shore and they say that as she made her trek from Ireland to Lochlin the scattering of clods of soil precious land became the Hebrides Aunt Julia spoke Gaelic very loud and very fast. And by the time I had learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave at Luskintyre. But I hear her still. Story goes, there's a young man, his name was Ian McKechen. And Ian was kind of a brash young man. And he had taken a fancy to a local lass whose name was Mary. And as she came closer and closer, she shape shifted back into a swan. And those fierce wings held Ian down until he was dead. And so to this day, that loch is known as Loch Ichechen, after Ian. And Shinagate. Uh, you might think that you go to Scotland and people speak Scots Gaelic there, and it's actually quite rare anymore. The subjugation of the Scottish people and the Irish people, not far away, by the British uh, was pretty uh, complete in a, in a lot of ways and on a lot of levels and uh, had a lot of far-reaching uh, effects um, that still are with us. The number of people who actually nowadays speak uh, Scots Gaelic at all, let alone with any regularity uh, or as their first language is, you know, really, really small. All of these tradition bearers that I visited with, that was their first language. So these recordings represent that slice of time just as it was beginning to turn. And these elders that I spent time with were directly connected to a time that we long for. Angus MacDonald, Donal and Ishvan, the man you saw with the traditional thatch, and he's going to tell a story. You're going to hear it in Gaelic first, and then in English. Harlan Cemetery in uh, Dalabek, so it was used. It's named after a, a priest which was in Dalabek many, many years ago. His name was Father Hall. That's what I used to be hearing the old people telling in the olden days. It was said the way it started, there was some elderly man herding cattle down on the market. It was a very common custom in these days to be herding cattle because there was no fences 
and there was more cattle in the island. Anyway, he was saying the ground opening up, large holes coming in the ground and then closing up again, and he couldn't figure out what on earth was wrong anyway. And Halland Cemetery is where Don Lushvan is buried now. So you all met Donnie McCrory, and Donnie uh, one day picked me up, and he said, we're going, I'm taking you somewhere. So we're driving over the roads, and he's telling me the story of what we're going to see. And we get where we're going, where he's taking me out to a place called the Klachen Moor. Klachen means stones. And we walk alongside um, a loch called Loch Drudebeg. It sort of sits at the base of the three mountains of South Uist, Hecla, Corradale, and Ben Moor. And Loch Drudebeg means Lake of the Little Druid. Um, there was this stone roadway. That's what he had been telling me about. That's what we were coming to see. So these rocks creating almost like a, a road right there in the middle of the, 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 the grass and the, the heather. So Donnie, I watched him. And he pulled himself up. He cupped his hands and his eyes began to sparkle. And Donnie began the story of the Beastie's Causeway. At that time, the topography of the island was slightly different from what it is today. But in those days in Stiligary, you couldn't go out to Loch Skipport without crossing the loch. And then, you know, Donnie, he mentioned the stone where the beast had pressed her foot into the stone where he was meant to leave her baby. So Donnie and I, we went looking for that stone. <clears throat> And that's a story for another day. <laughs> a poem by Norman McCaig called Aunt Julia. Aunt Julia spoke Gaelic very loud and very fast. I could not answer her. I could not understand her. She wore men's boots when she wore any. I can see her strong foot stained with peat, paddling with the treadle of the spinning wheel, while her right hand drew yarn marvelously out of air. The crux of it is right now, all these recordings are now needing to be digitized. And it's not just a digitization to preserve them, although that's part of it, because these tapes are starting to uh, erode. They're no longer as viable. It's about sending them back to the islands, to museums, to cultural organizations, and to individuals that are interested in them, um, so that they can be kept alive, so they can be listened to, and send them back home. Uh, the next phase will be to refine some of the more viable ones, and then, if possible, if we make it that far, to actually put together a CD of recordings. Um, and once they're archived, they can be shared with academic institutions, but more with the people, with cultural organizations. So please, if that's something that you can help with, if, and if it's a small amount, 